Coming up on The Bigger Picture, more stupidity by resident jackass, Australian truckers make a stand, and the opposite of untrue flags. <laughs> All this and much more on The Bigger Picture. We're on like Donkey Kong. You know, Donkey Kong might have been the last video arcade game that I ever played. <laughs> Welcome back to The Bigger Picture. I'm your host, Greg Prescott. And as always, we have a lot to cover. So let's get her done. Get her done. Looking at the world debt clock, the current dollar to silver ratio is $2,797. What this means is that the available dollars were adjusted to a gold and silver backed currency and the current price of an ounce of silver would be approximately $2,797. So in order to have $1 million worth of silver at this dollar to silver ratio, you take that million dollars and divide it by the dollar to silver ratio, which is $2,797, and you get how many ounces you need, which is 357.53 ounces. And what I always do is I, I round that up. So we'll round that up to 358 ounces and multiply that by the current silver bid uh, as of today of $22.95, giving you a total of $8,216.10 is how much it would cost to, today to buy $1 million. Yes, $1 million worth of silver at today's dollar to silver ratio. A Navy commander warns of a national security threat with Biden's mandatory vaccines of all military personnel. Commander Jay Furman is a career United States Naval officer, Naval aviator, and foreign area officer with extensive experience advising senior military, diplomatic, and has international organization leadership. Furman outlines specific reasons why Biden's decision is a national security risk, including the average member of the U.S. military is young and in excellent physical fitness, two categories that are nearly immune to the dangers of COVID. So far, only 24 people out of 2.2 million military personnel have died of And I've talked about this extensively. This goes beyond the military to our hospital infrastructures. Imagine if all doctors and hospital staff were required to get vaccinated. In a worst case scenario, they all die in the next three to five years. Who's left to take care of the sick and the injured? So we're looking at no military and no hospital care. This has major disaster written all over it. The CDC officially announced plans for internment camps intended for high risk individuals who would be temporarily relocated to a safe or green zones. Now, what do you want to bet that these high-risk individuals are perfectly healthy, non-symptomatic people who never got a shot? If anything, it should be the exact opposite of this. Lock up those who got the vaccine so they can reinfect one another with their spiked proteins while protecting the rest of us who were smart enough not to get vaccinated. In June, the Biden regime canceled a Donald Trump program put in place to oversee the evacuation of U.S. citizens stationed overseas in case of an emergency. Actually, Joe Biden reminds me of an old root beer commercial. Mr. Dumbass, I can bring a lot to Dumbass and Dumbass. I'm a go-getter. Dumbass material all the way. The name is Dumas. What a dumbass. And here we can see the Taliban driving off into the sunset with their Joe Biden sticker. So check this out. This is what's going on in your children's classrooms behind closed doors. I, I, I'll straight up call it out. I'm like so over it. Okay. 
Hey, well, I would be super proud of you if you chose to get the vaccine. But, yeah. So, like, yeah. We'll just keep getting Delta. We'll just keep getting variants over and over and over until people get vaccinated. It's never going to end. Exactly. It could end in five seconds if people would get vaccinated. Yes. I hate Donald Trump. I'm going to say it. I don't care what y'all think. Trump sucks. He's a sexual predator. He's a literal moron. Go tattle on me to the freaking admin. They don't give a crap. Yes. No, he is not. He what is. are you talking about? Are you <laughs> Turn off the Fox News. Do you hear it? This is the Fox News. So what? This is my classroom, and if you guys are going to put me at risk, you're going to hear about it. Because I have to be here. I don't have to be happy about the fact that there's kids coming in here with their variants that could possibly get me or my family sick. That's rude. And I'm not going to pretend like it's not. So don't ask me to. That's damn right. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to lie. If you ask me a legit question, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it either. Because y'all need to hear the truth. Hey, I 100% agree. You have a <laughs> you don't have to be, though. That's the thing. Most of y'all parents are dumber than you. I'm going to say that out loud. <laughs> My parents are freaking dumb. Okay? And the minute I figured that out, the world opens up. You don't have to do everything your parents say, and you don't have to believe everything your parents believe. Because most likely you're smarter than them. I have 110% disagree. My parents are genius, and I'm the idiot of the family. <laughs> like 110%. Yeah. 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 Yeah
You know, it's hard to feel sorry for these people who try to show us how easy it is to get vaccinated and then either have a bad reaction or die from it. The is just like everything the left tries to do. It always backfires. Unfortunately, the worst part of the backfire will happen in about two to three years. And with each comes an RFID chip. So this is what could happen conceivably when 5G is turned on. And this is the product of the mainstream media who continuously pushes a liberal narrative that is out of touch with reality. So do you guys remember Kamala Harris? Well, college students, most likely liberal arts students, were asked about Kamala and the job she's doing. They were then asked if they could name any of her accomplishments. Check it out. We're here in Georgetown today to talk with students about Kamala Harris. Do they approve the job she's doing? And if yes, can they name any specific accomplishments or policies that they're especially proud of? Let's find out. I want to get your thoughts on our Vice President Kamala Harris. What do you think of her? Is she doing a good job in office? Uh, yeah, I think so. I uh, really like her. I think uh, it's very um, inspiring to see our first you know, woman vice president. I do love having a woman, person of color, democratic leader in that position. Um, and I think she's a great representation. I feel like definitely it's amazing to have a woman vice president and we're making great headway with that. And she's a definite girl boss. I think she's doing great. History on crime, I disagree with, but she seems to be reforming that opinion at least to some degree. I think that she's never really been dedicated to caring about the communities she's a part of. I really do agree with a lot of the policies she's been putting out and I think she's a great vice president. What policies specifically do you agree with? I don't really know. <laughs> Can you tell me some? Maybe I don't, maybe I don't know what her policies are. Off the top of my head, I can't think of many of them. No, and that's exactly what I mean. That's probably shamefully my party my party partisanship showing through to some degree as intelligent as these kids needed to be to get into college their lack of intelligence and party loyalty shows how brainwashed they are and college will only encourage more of this i'd like to give a quick shout out to our latest n5d patreon subscriber vanessa who recently joined our patreon family and you can join our n5d patreon family for as little as a dollar 11 a month we have six different levels and various benefits for each level and it really goes a long way in helping to support my work another way you can support my work is with the purchase of an n5d quantum tie-dye t-shirt and this is the one I'm wearing right now. As a matter of fact, this is a brand new one. It's called New Earth. Get it now on N5D.net. I'd like to give a shout out to everyone who recently purchased an N5D Quantum Tie-Dye t-shirt, including Denise, Matthew, Catherine, Nasa, Joanna, Lynn, Linda, and Carol. I'd also like to remind you that we still have some shirts that are at $10 on sale. Uh, some of the slim fit, ladies slim fit shirts. And I also marked down a few other shirts, uh, men's shirts and uh, a couple uh, other different ladies shirts as well. So check them all out at N5D Quantum Tie Dye at N5D.net. And on Saturday, August 28th, Allie and I are hosting an N5D Zoom love match meetup for like-minded spiritual people. You can get the Zoom link by visiting our Facebook event page called N5D Zoom Love Match on August 28th at 3 p.m. I'll be giving the Zoom link on the Facebook event page and I'll put that link to the Facebook page in the more info section of this video. Stu Peters spoke with an Australian ex-military official who confirmed that at least two children are dead after being inoculated in mass of 24,000 kids that were ushered into a sports arena to take the jab in the absence of any adults. In this clip, you can see a hysterically crying child 
being torn from her father's arms. This is heartbreaking to watch, especially for anyone who's a parent. But here's some good news from Australia. Australian truck drivers are uniting to block off roads and deliveries, basically shutting down Australia until the Australian government backs down on quarantines and vaccinations. Check it out. This is to the government of Australia, the so-called corporate government. We run this country. We the people. And I'm a truck driver. We as truckies, we will block all your highways, We'll block all your ports and we'll even stop what we need to stop. There is nothing you will be able to do. You back off. These are our roads. This is our country and we will run it how we want to run it. This is our country. You and your vac is bullshit. You can fuck off. You are not going to mandate nothing. And for the kids, what you're doing right, is disgusting. What you've done in Roundham up in New South Wales is disgusting. We are going to run this country. We are taking it back. Us truck drivers are going to be the front line and whoever's behind us, we are going to take our country back. You politicians make me sick. You guys are filthy. You guys do not represent us people and you don't represent this country. F you. We're going to take our country back. So I came across this. Check it out. How many people are in this picture? Looks like three, right? But look right here. There's a camouflaged arm. <laughs> so there is actually a fourth. Film at 11. There's some disinfo floating around on the internet. And while it sounds feasible, most people just assume it's the truth and don't research the actual material posted. When we share baseless memes and stories like this, it makes us no better than the mainstream media. For example, this so-called excerpt is from a book written in 1989 called The New World Order by A. Ralph Epperson, in which he allegedly talks about Operation Lockstep. It also allegedly talks about and 5G radiation. Keep in mind, this was written in 1989, and at the time, all we had was dial-up computer connections. Yeah, remember that? You can actually find a free PDF of this book online and research this for yourself, but everything on the right-hand side of that meme does not come from Epperson's book. And if you dig a little further, you'll find that Operation Lockstep is an actual Rockefeller Foundation's report titled Scenarios for Future of Technology and International Development, published in May of 2010 in cooperation with the Global Business Network of futurologist Peter Schwartz. But once again, the bullshit credited to Operation Lockstep is exactly that. Bullshit. It's fear propaganda. It doesn't exist. Here's another one. It says more than 75% of New York City's 450,000 hospital workers have refused to get vaccinated. Well, it's bullshit. It's actually the exact opposite of that. So don't be afraid to call people out when they're passing on hot air and bullshit memes because it's not doing us any favors. We don't need disinfo, but sometimes the truth hurts. I still haven't found one person who can show me the original Nassara bill, but if you want to keep believing that hot air and bullshit, don't let me stop you. Right now, more than ever, we need people telling the truth. And like Gandhi said, even if you're in the minority of one, the truth is still the truth. And that's what I bring to you. And sometimes it's not the popular opinion like Nassara Jasara, but it is the truth. The bottom line is right now, you have a front row seat to the Holocaust version two. The difference is there are a lot of people who will not go willingly. You're one of them, and I'm one of them. 
Let's stick together. And here we have a major heads up possibility for a false upon announcing the results of the Arizona election audit. And of course, don't expect the mainstream media to report on what their findings are as the mainstream media is complicit in treason. And lastly, this is the kind of news that should be on every television station. Polish silver medalist in the javelin throw, Maria Andrzejczak, sold her Olympic medal in an auction to help raise money for a little Polish boy's heart surgery. A Polish chain store, Zabka, won the auction but gave the medal back to Andrzejczak. These acts of kindness are going on all the time, but the mainstream media is determined to continue pushing the fear agenda because it's easier to rule over people when they live in fear. So do something nice today for someone else. Let's make this world a better place for all of us. And lastly, if no one has told you this yet today, please allow me to be the first. You are loved. You are appreciated. Thank you for your service to humanity. That ends another episode of The Bigger Picture. And I'm Greg Prescott from N5D.com sending you all infinite love and light. Namaste.